Hi, I'm Mike Wheatley with Makersquare, and this is Say What? Introduction to Developer Tools. Documentation. As you're writing your JavaScript or using certain tools on the internet, you're definitely going to have questions about the way to use these tools. So almost every tool out there comes with some type of guidelines. It's typically referred to as documentation. A very popular documentation is the Mozilla Developers Network. This gives you some of the best ways to use JavaScript and gives you some examples. Let's take a look really quick at the array documentation on MDN. Here it tells you how to create an array in JavaScript. It tells you how to access an index on an array. It shows you how to loop over the array. And it keeps going and tells you different ways to interact with your array. It gives you a description in English to describe to you what an array is. And then it gives you even more examples about how arrays could be used. It's very powerful because there are a lot of nuances to JavaScript code. And if you read through the MDN documentation, you will know all about these nuances. Another popular tool out there is jQuery. It also has very powerful documentation about all the different methods that you can use when you're using the jQuery library. If you check out add class here, it'll show you how you can use it and examples of how it's being used in a project. Debugger. Another thing that you will encounter frequently is debugging your code. Many times you will run your code, you'll get an error in your code, and you won't know how to fix this error without debugging. Let's take a look in the Chrome DevTools about how you can debug. Here, we've written out a little piece of code, and we want to make sure we can debug it. So you do this by setting a breakpoint in your code and clicking the Run button. Once you do that, your code will stop where you've set the breakpoint, and you can look to see what values are assigned to what variables in your code. Here, in particular, we're inside of a for loop. So we want to know what our i value is so that we know what we're accessing in the array. So over here, you can add watch variables. That way, you can input a variable here, and it'll show up when your code's running, and you can check to see the value. Another way is just to, to hover over the value that you want to see, and it'll give it to you. So if we want to keep going, we can hit this play button, and it'll run the code until we hit the breakpoint again. Because we're inside a for loop, We'll keep hitting this breakpoint until we jump outside of the for loop. So here I'm watching the value i and building up this new array. So I'm basically reversing this my array and writing out the words maker square. It's important to use the debugger so that you can inspect those values that are inside of the variables. That way you can truly understand what's going on with your code without having to guess. A P I. Another tool that you've become familiar with is an API. API stands for Application Program Interface. It's basically a set of routines for you to be able to ask for data from other websites. If you were building out a website and you needed to show a map on your own website, you probably wouldn't want to write out a map on your own. You'd probably want to use one that already exists. A way to do this is to ask Google for one of their maps. You could send the request to Google telling it what kind of map you wanted where you wanted the map to be in the world, and then Google would send that map back to you so that you could then display it on your page. Here, we'll take a look at the documentation on the Google Maps JavaScript API. As you can see, it gives you a demo and sample code about how you could call that API. It gives you some steps on getting up and running, and it makes it very simple for you to use the Google Maps API on your own website. Package Manager. Something else that you will commonly encounter as a developer is a package manager. You're going to be working with a lot of different tools and software to make your life easier. In order to keep track of all these tools, you will need another tool that manages those tools for you. These are called package managers. On Mac OS, you'll use a tool called Homebrew. Homebrew installs software for you. And then you can use Brew to install something called Bower. Bower is something that's used on the client side of your program to install such libraries as jQuery and underscore. 
Bauer will go out to the internet and find the most recent version of the library that you're requesting. Or you can give it a version number to make sure that changes don't affect your production code. If you wanted to use the same type of tool, if you were building out a server, you could use NPM. That stands for Node Package Manager. This way, if you have dependencies on your server side, you can use NPM to make sure you have the correct and most up-to-date versions of that code. Let's take a quick look at the NPM documentation. Here, you can get a sense for the different types of ways NPM can be used. You can see what it is, you can see how to install different packages with it, and you can search for the different packages that you might want to use. It's a great way to handle all the dependencies on the server side of your application. Snippets. We touched on this earlier, but an important piece of the Chrome developer tools are the snippets. Snippets give you a place where you can quickly test out your code. You can also save it so that you can come back to it later and check out what you've done. Let's take a look at a snippet that I've written out. Here you can see I've cleared the console in the first line, and then I've set up a variable or two, and then I've entered a for loop and done some work on those variables. If you wanted to execute this code to see the output, you could hit this play button and that would run the snippet for you. Then you could check the console to see the result that you were getting. Inside this snippet, you can see that we printed out M-A-K-E-R-S-Q-U-A-R-E. -E. That all came from this array that we defined inside the snippet. It's a great tool because you can test your code quickly without having to write it out in a sublime text file and then load that into your browser. This way you can write the code directly in the browser. It can also be saved, as I said before, so that you can come back and reuse code that you've written out before. Library. Another thing that you will encounter when you build out your websites are JavaScript libraries. Libraries are toolkits that make your life easier. It's a set of code that's reliable and reusable. You can download these libraries using a package manager such as Bower or NPM and then use them in your project. A very popular library is jQuery. jQuery lets you interact with the DOM in a reliable and standard way. Let's take a look really quick at the jQuery API. Here, you can see all the different methods that jQuery gives to you. This is just JavaScript code that lives in a jQuery library. Once you download that library, you'll have access to these methods and you can apply them directly in your code. That way, Anybody else will know what's going on because you're using a standard way to use jQuery. One thing to keep in mind is that people will talk about libraries and frameworks. Libraries are just JavaScript code that you can use inside of your projects. Frameworks are more of a way how to organize your code and they're much more heavyweight. Libraries are very lightweight and allow you to quickly download them and use them in your project. Framework. Speaking of frameworks, one that is very popular is Angular. Angular tells you how you're going to organize your code while also giving you a set of tools to make your life easier. But it's very restrictive. Angular makes you write your code in the way that they want it written. A library, on the other hand, allows you to interact with the library in your own way and use it how you would please. However, Frameworks are very strict, and if you want to do something in your own way, most of the time you have to bend the rules or go outside of the framework. They're very rigid, and they can cause issues if you haven't thought about how you're going to apply the framework to your project. Like I said, a very popular framework is Angular. Another one that people use is Backbone. Let's take a look at Angular really quickly. Here it is. If you go to angular.io, you can check out the framework, and it'll tell you all about its features and how to get up and running quickly with Angular. That wraps it up for developer tools. Here you've gotten a brief look at the different ways your life can be easier as a JavaScript developer. These tools will help you manage your code and keep everything in sync. If you want to find out more, you can check out makersquare.com or look at our other videos. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.